Okay, here we go. This is um, Spring 2023 Exam 2 Solutions. This is the probability test. Um, so let's go ahead and roll through this and hopefully get any questions answered that you still have. Number one, a survey of American women are asked to name their favorite color. And we got 19 said blue, red, da da da. The rest named another color. Okay, so we got 19 plus 19 plus 16, plus 11, plus 14. If I add those up, 19 plus 19, yeah, I'm grabbing my calculator, holy cow. Plus one, four, I get 79 um, percent. So if that was, this, this was 79, then the rest named another color, so the other color had to be 21%. Or it should be a hundred minus seventy nine. Okay, a probability of red or green is just let's see, nineteen said red, sixteen said green, so just add them up and you get thirty five. Nineteen plus sixteen is thirty five percent. Let's probably said something other than blue, so probability of not blue. Well, that's one minus the probability that they said blue because it's a complement. 1 minus 0.16, which is, <coughs> I'm sorry, blue is 19. Which is 0.81 or 81%. You can leave them as decimals or percents. Either one is fine. All right, one town. 60% of all voters are Democrats. Two voters are randomly selected. What's the probability that you got a Democrat? And a Democrat. Well, that's probably a good Democrat the first time, and they're probably a good Democrat the second time. Now, if they told us how many people were in the city, then we could maybe then we could do oh, five hundred the first time and four hundred four hundred ninety nine the second time. You know, we would go down, but we're assuming that the town's large enough that it's a sixty percent chance. How you know, for picking a Democrat either time. Okay, so that'd be 0.36. Now, probably selecting a Republican and a Democrat in any order. Well, that means it's probably I'd pick a Republican and then a Democrat. Or a Democrat and a Republican. Well, the probability of this happening is a Republican first is 40. And then a Democrat is 60. Or I'm going to add it together. A Democrat is 60 and a Republican is 40. And if you do that, you get 0.48 or 48%. Okay, so don't forget the or is the plus and the and is the times, generally speaking. Okay? All right, three. Uh. Got my key right here as well, so I can have the answers handy to save time on the calculations. Um, so we got Spanish, French, and both. So when you see that, you should be thinking Venn diagram, Spanish, French. So 3% do both, 0 0.03. 22 are Spanish, so that means this would be 19, because 19 and 3 gives you the 22. And the French is 5, so that means 2% are over here. Right. And we could figure out what's on the outside if we need to. We'll see if we need to. So what's the probability that they speak Spanish and not French? Well, that'd be the 19%. What's probably that a French speaking student speak Spanish. Spanish given French. So it's a probability that they're Spanish and French over probability of French. Spanish and French is 0 0.03. French is 0 0.05 which would be 0 0.60. Okay, given your French, we're only interested in these five if there were a hundred people, there'd be five inside this circle. 
Of those five, how many speak Spanish? Three. So it'd be three out of five is where that comes from. Okay, if a single fair die is rolled, probability of five given there was odd. Oh, we did that one on the review. Um, probability of five given odd is one out of three because there's three odd ones. Delta card, one at a time, probably you get no black cards. So probably if red and red and red, 26 over 52, 25 over 51, because we're not, we don't replace them. 24 over 50, and if you do that, you get 0.118. And if you're dealt three, let's probably have at least one black card. It's one minus the probably the complement of at least one black, because one black could be one black or two or three. It's a lot of different possibilities. This would be no black or all red, which is what we just did right up here, right? So this is one minus 0.118, which is 0.882. All right, number seven, we've got disease. Now there's a test, but it's not accurate. Test the, if you have the disease, test positive or negative. So again, this is one of those um, tree diagrams because you either have the disease or no disease. And then here you test positive, negative, positive, negative. And we know 3.2% um, have the disease, 0 0.032. And if you have the disease, you'll test positive, 0.914. And if you don't have the disease, 0 0.042 will test positive. So if we fill in the others, 968, because those have to add up to 1, 0.086. Ten point nine five eight. Because remember, each pair has to each pair has to add up to one. So if I pick a person at random, it's probably they're infected and test positive. Well, have the disease, so that'd be point zero three two times point nine one four. Right, because if they're infected have disease and test positive it's this and that and you get 0 0.029 what's well, probably a personal test positive well that's here or here so that's out here or this branch so probably a test positive will be 0 0.032 times 0.914 plus 0.968 times 0 0.042. And if you do that, you get 0 0.069904. Or if you round it, you could say 0 0.07. And C says, if you pick a person at random, what's the probability that a person doesn't have the disease if they tested positive? So no disease given they tested positive. Well, that's just a probability of no disease and tested positive over a probability that tested positive. Well, no disease and positive would be 0.968 times 0 0.042, that's this branch right here, over tested positive, that's just this guy right here. And I would use the non-rounded number to make it more accurate. So if you do that, you get 0.582, or 58.2%. Okay. So if you test positive, the probability that you actually don't have the disease is 58%. That's pretty high. <laughs> it's really high, in fact. But that's because you get these false positives. Um, is quite large. 
Okay. 3% fail pre-sale testing. We're going to select five chips. Probably no fail. So that would mean good, 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 and good. And that probably that they're good is 0.97 to the fifth power, right? So we got to have all of them being good. And that would be 0.859. Probably exactly two fail out of the five. You have to recognize that we have a binomial situation here. And we have n equals five. The probability of success is failure is 0 0.03. And so x is the number of fails. So x equals two. That's equal to um, this nice formula. Five choose two times 0 0.03 squared, 0.97 to the third. Or you could do binomial PDF and you would get 0 0.0082 or 0.82%. Okay. And then the probably at least one fails X is greater than or equal to one, which is one minus the probability that X, the complement of greater than or equal to one is X equals zero. So what's the probability that none fail? Well, we got that from the top here, 0.859, which is 0.141 or 14.1%. Okay, we're number nine. How many ways can you arrange six books on a bookshelf if a different order is a different arrangement? Well, here's my six slots. I've got six choices for the first, five for the second, four for the third, three, two, one. So that would be six factorial or 720 possible ways. Now, how many ways can I arrange all six if a different order is the same arrangement? Well, if a different order is the same arrangement, then every one of these is the same arrangement, right? Because if I switch the order, it's the same thing. There is, in fact, exactly one way to do that. Right? Because no matter how I put the six on there, a different order is the same arrangement. So there's one. All right, C. Suppose I have time to read three of them. How many ways can I select them if the order that I read them does not matter? So if the order doesn't matter, that's what we call a combination. And I'm taking the six books and I'm choosing three of them to read. The order doesn't matter. Okay, so three books, flip the order around, it's the same three. And if I do that, this is a calculator question. There's a formula for it, but you can certainly use your calculator on it. It's going to be six. And then I'm going to go to the math menu. And then go over to um, PRB. And then go down to NCR. Three. Gives me 20. Now, suppose I have only have time to read three of them. How many ways can I select them if order does matter? Well, I can do 6P3, although I think it's easier to do this. I got six choices for the first, five for the second, four for the third, which is 30, so I get 120 ways to read it if a different order is a different arrangement. Okay, so there's going to be more of those. All right, 10. Um, I believe my answer is fractions, probably that they use social media. We'll use social media as 338 out of 530. What's probably that they are 18 to 34 and does not use social media? 
that's those guys. 33 out of 530. What's probably that use social media or is 55 or older? So they use social media. That's all of these. Or are 55 or older? That's all of these. So I need to add all these guys up, but don't add the 49 up twice, right? Divided by 530. And if you do that, you get 404 over 530. Now, sometimes you might do this 338 plus 115. But then you better subtract 49 once because you added the 49 twice by adding the 338 and the 115, right? So these are the same. Among the social media users, so the only people that I'm concerned about right now are the social media users, so these guys. What's well, probably that they're 35 to 44, so that'd be 89 out of 338. And if an adult is 45 to 54, what's well, probably they're not social media users? 57. All right. I think that's it. Nope, we got the back side. One more. Okay. You're going to play a game as follows. $2 to play, roll a dice once. Whatever you roll, that's how many dollars you're given. Make a probability for the cost of the game to you. So if X, if that's the cost. And we got the probability. Well, I can roll a zero. I can't roll a zero. What are you saying? Um, I could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So if I roll... Let's see, we want to know the cost. Whatever my roll is, that's how many dollars I'm given. So if I roll a one, I'm given a dollar, but I paid two, so I really lost one. If I roll a two, I get zero. The cost of the game is zero because I paid two and I got two back. Roll a three. I paid two, I got three back. So one, four. I paid two dollars, got four back. I won two. Five, I've won five, paid two, got three, and six would be four. And the probability is one sixth for each of these. All right? So it says, what's my expected value of the game? E of x is going to be negative one times one six plus zero times one six plus one times one six plus two times one six, plus three times one six, plus four times one six. And if you do that, you get a dollar fifty. And what does this mean? This tells me in the long run, I'm gonna make on average a dollar fifty a game. Okay, lastly, number 12, um, Lake Larson has this. Find the z-score. Ooh, I did not tell you this. I To actually answer this, I have to tell you that it's normally distributed. Because then I can say, oh, the z-score. Well, I can find the z-score either way, but to answer these lit next two, I need to know that it's normal. Z score is going to be 66 minus 58 over 5, which is 1.6. Don't forget the Z score formula, X minus mu over sigma. What's well, probably the temperature will be greater than 66? So if mu is 58 and sigma is 5, greater than 66 is going to be up here. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 66, or it's just greater than, it doesn't matter for the calculations if it's greater than or greater than or equal to. 
I can do normal CDF. I can look up 1.6 on the table and get this area to the left. Either way you do it, you would get 5.5%. Um, and lastly, the temperature that separates the bottom 10%. U is 58, sigma is still 5, and now this is x, and this right here is 10%. So we're going to go backwards. So if you find the z-score, I think we did this in class yesterday, negative 1.28. So I know that z equals x minus mu over sigma, negative 1.28 equals x minus 58 over 5. And so you get X is 51.6 degrees. That does it. Okay. There you go. Hope that helps.